message for today is Luke chapter 19. Uh, if you've got your Bibles and you want to turn to them and verses 1 to 10. Uh, we conclude our series called Making Room uh, as we've looked at opportunities Jesus had to share food around various tables throughout his ministry and uh, we've only touched the service of all that he did uh, in those environments but here's one that I would guess would be very familiar to all of us who have been brought up in church and um, please don't start singing the song just yet will you um, and we'll save that for a little bit later in private um, if that's okay Luke chapter 19 Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus he was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached that, the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Amen. I hope you can see all those flannel graph figures that the Sunday school teacher put up on the board very carefully to tell the story. And then all of them fell off, uh, which was the fun time of it all. So we've uh, looked through the ministry of Jesus, who over a very short period of time managed to notch up many, many meals in many different people's houses, meeting lots of different people and uh, encountering them in particular ways that they needed for him at that time. But of course, those meals weren't just, just for the sake of eating. Uh, in every meal, Jesus revealed a little bit more about who he is so that people could understand why he came. And in every one of those encounters, he gave us a glimpse of what the kingdom of God looked like, a bit bigger picture of the kingdom that had come in him, but also was to come through his death and resurrection and is coming again. It wasn't the food that changed the life, although I'm sure it was good fare, but it was the person, the person who they met in that particular room, around that particular table, on that particular day, whether it just provoked them to ask more questions or whether it brought healing to them or acceptance to them or welcome to them. Jesus used every one of those occasions to reveal a little bit more about him. And whether it was a banquet at the home of a Pharisee, which he seemed to do quite often, or whether it's pie and mash on the rough table at the wayside inn on the way to Emmaus, or whether it was just a few stones on a beach with fish on a barbecue, or a five loaves and two fish kind of picnic on a hillside with many, many thousands. Jesus made room for people. That was who he was. That was who he came to be, to be part of showing the kingdom welcome that God intended for people. And here once again in this story of Zacchaeus, the chief tax collector, Jesus makes room. And this morning I want to think about how he makes room for change, for change to happen, not only in that man's life, but for us as well. So here's my three things for you today. Firstly, that Jesus makes room to stop and see you. I think that's such a powerful image that Jesus makes room to stop and to see you. The text tells us, doesn't it, that he was just passing through. It doesn't seem as if he had any intention to stop because if you look a bit further in, in Luke's gospel, Matthew, uh, Luke 19:28, that was when he entered Jerusalem. That was the beginning of his week when he would end up to the cross. So passing through Jericho, he was just on his way to what he was about to face that week ahead. But even though Zacchaeus was hiding from the crowd, Jesus stopped and saw the man who was up a tree. It seems that Zacchaeus was longing to see Jesus, and I'd like to think that he was longing to be seen by Jesus. He wanted to see who Jesus was, verse 3 tells us. He wanted to see who Jesus was. Now that's investigation, isn't it? 
Is what I have heard about Jesus actually true? Is what I've heard Jesus has been doing and saying, is it true? Is he the real deal? Is he who he says he is? Can I trust him? Does he tell the truth? It's the sort of thing you'd expect a tax collector to do, wouldn't, wouldn't you? To gather all the information ahead of time, to see if he really was the person that everybody said he was. Now, I'm not sure Zacchaeus was um, undertaking a tax office investigation into the activities and affairs of Jesus, whether they were taxable or tax deductible, or whether tax avoidance or crossing the line to tax evasion. After all, all those meals, I mean, are they expenses or gifts in kind? I'm, I get a bit confused whether I need to declare all those lovely meals that I'm able to have. But Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. The, the Greek word for wanting to see him implies to investigate to reach a binding resolution. It was like this was almost the end of his search. This was almost the, the final bit of the jigsaw for him. To get to a final decision, is Jesus who he says he is? Can I trust him in this moment with my life? The, the Greek also means to get to the bottom of the matter. This is like his final, his final attempt that seems like a tax collector to me through and through. Very, very thorough. And Jesus makes room to stop and to see him as a response to Zacchaeus making room to stop and see him as well. And this longing that Zacchaeus had, of course, overcame all the negative things about who he was and the job he did in that culture. It forced him, that longing to see Jesus forced him to come out in public. He, he faced the risk of being jeered at by the crowds because tax collectors were not liked in that culture because they worked for the Romans. It forced him to run, which would have been very undignified for someone of his stature, uh, of his status rather, rather than his stature. And it forced him because of his stature to climb up a tree. It seems like he was desperate to see this. It seems like something was going on in him that forced him out of hiding. It's the sort of thing that you'd love to see in a follower of Jesus, isn't it? It seems like he had what it took. And I think it's that that Jesus saw that day, the desire of a heart, wanting to make room for change in his life. Are you stuck up a tree at the moment? Desperate for Jesus to stop and see you? Desperate that he might see your longing heart for more of him? Isaiah 43 writes, But now this is what the Lord says, He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, and you are mine. For those stuck up a tree, Jesus stops and he sees and he knows your name as well. Interestingly, the name Zacchaeus, it means innocent and clean. <laughs> he hadn't done too well so far. But what Jesus sees is the potential wrapped up in that person. And he sees the potential in each of us to live up to who we were created to be. I love also that Jesus makes room to, to sit and stay with you as well. What did Jesus say to him? Come down immediately. Come down immediately. There's an urgency from Jesus in this invitation, so much so that Zacchaeus gets that and he came down at once, the text says. This man who was so used to giving orders that what he said people would do immediately, he was the chief tax collector, he was in charge of many other tax tax collectors who he needed to keep in order the man who was so used to being in control now responds immediately to an invitation because it says he came down at once and welcomed Jesus gladly he welcomed Jesus with joy he saw something of God's grace in the person of Jesus and Zacchaeus made the decision in that moment this is what I need I need grace I need joy that's what I'm longing for deep within me today.
And although the Sunday school song, which we're not going to sing, tells us that Jesus said he was coming to your house for tea, what Jesus actually says is, I'm coming to your house to stay. I'm coming to your house to stay. Now, I expect it included food. It would be poor hospitality not to. But Jesus was more interested, it was, was interested in more than having a meal with Zacchaeus. He was most interested in Zacchaeus changing his life, changing his direction. I'm going to come and stay with you. I'm coming to sit at your table. He's not looking for a fast food dash, a quick sandwich whilst continuing on his walk to Jerusalem as he heads towards the cross. Jesus wants to stay to stay in the lives of the people who respond to the invitation he makes. That's his commitment back to those who come down immediately, to those who are looking for grace and joy once again. Isaiah 43 and verse 2 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. See, he's come to stay. And again, this is not to impress you, but the word in Greek means to remain, to not go away, to continue to be with, to dwell with, to tarry with. This is not offer of a lifetime of being together at the table for eternity. And, and I do believe this is the longing in all of our hearts, to be welcomed, to be valued, to have someone who loves us enough to stay with us, whatever is happening. And that's his promise to each of us today. But the final bit of this story, of course, just broadens this whole uh, work of Jesus out because Jesus makes room to seek and to save. Zacchaeus, this very practical, repentant response of, of understanding that what he'd gathered, he'd cheated and he'd made his idol. Before Jesus says the words, today salvation has come to this house, Zacchaeus knew in his heart what he had to do. His response is not a prerequisite of forgiveness, of course, it's the result of knowing what, it, what has happened. He feels it deep inside. The response of Jesus to him has prompted him to release everything he has back to God. The cr crowd can't see it in that moment. For the crowd, all they can see is that he's gone to be the guest of a sinner. Well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's the point of why Jesus came, to go to be the guest of a sinner. And that's the beautiful promise that we get to remember today as well. But he's come to be a guest in our lives too. For Jesus to come to your house to stay, it's his initiative. The cross is his initiative. He first loved us, but I guess he's looking for a response. Zacchaeus, his response was to give some of his wealth away. Not all of it, but he gave back what he had cheated and he gave back four times the amount, more than even the, the law would have expected him to have done. But now, you see, he's still a tax collector after this encounter. But now he's a Jesus follower who's a tax collector, and that changes everything. <laughs> That's his front line still. And he continues to do that job, I hope, in a way that honors and reflects his encounter with Jesus. And now he's living up to his name, innocent, clean. Now it's for real. Now it's his gift. And on that day, the, in Jericho, the walls came crashing down once again. The crowd had formed a wall to prevent Zacchaeus from seeing Jesus. But Jesus, as he does, finds a way through. Salvation has come. The walls have come tumbling down in Zacchaeus' life. In the person of Jesus who pulled up a chair to the table as the guest, he quickly becomes the host and salvation has come, forgiveness and healing and freedom. Because that's why Jesus came. He came to find people who got themselves lost. I, I love one definition of, of what this word means of lost. It's 
people who find themselves in the wrong place. (laughs) People who find themselves in the wrong place. He's come for people like that who have drifted away from from where he longs for us to be, who have have diverted their journey away from the the walk that Jesus wants us to to carry on with. He's come for people who can't find their way home because they're lost somewhere and don't know where to turn. He's come for people like you and me, which is good news today. And today we're going to share in this very simple act of remembrance this meal that Jesus left for us that has been eaten uh, for the last 2,000 years plus and will go on being eaten as an act of remembrance. So we can remember the walls have been knocked down because of the cross. We can remember that he knows our name because we are his. We, we can affirm that he, his promise is that he will stay with us. And in these moments, we can find our way back home, seeking forgiveness and welcome and love once again from the one who gives it. No one's beyond his love. Even a little man cannot hide from Jesus. And neither can we. Because he's looking. And he's stopping. And he's seeing. And he's welcoming. And he's saving to set us free for what he has still to do let him stay with you and him let him stay with you and if you found yourself in the wrong place today this may help you to come back home and to be welcomed back walking with him again